<laughs> Sir. Hi, my name is Andrew. And Hi, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry, Joseph. It's turned into a 10 step. 12 steps. Good. It's okay. 10 steps. <laughs> 10 steps. Good for me. The last two don't count. I admit I have a problem with counting. <laughs> So, there are uh, a lot of different career links represented, um, not to, not to uh, make any age comments. Say, uh, say, say again, a lot of different what? Career links. Career links. 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 Got it. I was hearing links. links. Sorry, it's like sausages? <laughs> <laughs> Saying you're old, Bill. Saying you're old as long as young, Bill. All right. <laughs> this is the way of life, that friends. <laughs> Don't be so shy, just blurt it out. We're, we're, all, we're all pretty tough people up here. So I was just curious what has changed about starting out, um, hmm. especially as some of the mediums have been created and evolved uh, as time has gone on. Ramble Room Room. Um, I think everyone who gets to make a living doing creative stuff is really, really lucky. Um, but I think that like starting out when I did, you know, which was in the last the last decade, doing comics. When I compare that to uh, to the the people who I grew up reading, like Bill Watterson and Calvin and Hobbes, you know, he shopped Calvin and Hobbes around for five years before he got it published anywhere, you know, and, and that was five years of working some other job, and and you know, I started out and, and then he got <laughs> lucky, and I started out and I got lucky, and it was you know I started drawing at the end of 2005 and I was doing it for a living in the middle of 2006. And I think that, 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 that the internet has sort of accelerated a lot of the paths in a way that, that for, for a lot of kinds of things, you can, if you get lucky, you, you can get lucky in a much, you know, like, there are, there are a lot of much shorter paths or much, uh, you know, there are, all, there are all these different paths available and, uh, and it can still take forever, but, but there are a lot more options than there used to be. Not to be um, anti-internet, in this room, <laughs> although I can defend myself Switch. against you nerds, <laughs> but uh, it used to be that there that, that there were very few portals to the to the big <coughs> world, and um, and that meant that in order to succeed, you had to really struggle and struggle against a tremendous adversity, and a lot of probably really good art didn't make it all the way. And now we have the luxury of self-publishing, and most young artists that I meet in song and story uh, self-publish first, and that is that is a great freedom. But it also produces a kind of a kind of laziness on all of our parts that we're, we self-publish and we we develop a small fan base, and that that works. That, that seems good. It, but we're not struggling against quite as much adversity, and that lack of struggle, uh, I think, often keeps people at the level of good, rather than creating those, those, those greats. You know, Bill Watterson made Calvin and Hobbes one of the greatest pieces of art of the 20th century, and I can't imagine that the five years he spent trying to sell it didn't hone it until it was absolutely you know, absolutely flawless. And the ability to self-publish means that a lot of us are like, yeah, that's great, I've got, you know, 15,000 Twitter followers, doing good. <laughs> and there, there's, there are pluses to that. I mean, my own career, I never achieved great success, but I am able to make a living as a writer. Um, and as a 44-year-old songwriter, 25 years ago, there, there were no 44-year-old songwriters making a living. You know, guys like me would be playing in a bar. Um, a guy like Jonathan Colton, who's a niche artist, wouldn't have ever found this fan base 25 years ago because the major labels wouldn't have let him do it. So those, those are great pluses. But we don't have as much adversity to struggle against. And so what we see now is there are a lot more writers and I think a lot fewer truly great artists. Um, not to denigrate anybody here on the panel. I think we're all amazing artists. John Scalzi, you are an amazing artist. I know what you really think. <laughs> but you're going to be the first one killed when we go on a landing party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Don't worry, I'm Wiley. And I'm stringy and gamey, so you don't want me anymore. I actually want to know what Molly thinks about yes. this. Yeah, no, speaking as a not truly great artist, um, <laughs> because I had, I had the good fortune of becoming noticed and known on accident. I posted videos on YouTube for my friends, and they got discovered. And there was suddenly this sort of people looking at me expecting me to write more songs. And I didn't have the five years of, you know, Bill Washington-esque, like, shopping my music around and, like, honing my craft and getting that fire in my belly, like, I'm gonna top most tops of the pops, I'm gonna make it. Like, I had none of that incentive and I had none of that drive. I was just writing songs for fun and my friends wanted to hear them. And then the rest of the internet showed up. So, <laughs> and, and it's, it's been strange for me the last few years trying to figure out, I didn't know where that, that those ideas came from. I didn't know what part of me to mine to create more songs. And it's been weird to go through that process in the public eye. And without the internet, that wouldn't have even happened. I would just be making mixtapes with my friends. And it's, it's a brave new world because there's people in it. <laughs> I think one of the cool things about the internet <clears throat> process is that there is a divide that I think we have a lot of respect as a culture for very, very polished, finished products like we always have uh, with like a truly great film. But I think there's a developing just love of being able to watch a human in a pleasantly voyeuristic way uh, <laughs> in, in, in watching them go through the actual normal human struggle. And I think that's a lot of why people love Twitter, why they love internet artists, because we get to see every element of how they got to the final product. Yeah. But that's a but that's like the social aspect of it. But it, it isn't a, it isn't about the art. You know what I mean? Like the is the social sharing that we all enjoy is uh, like a hundred years from now, all that will stand is the art. Were you joking about your book of tweets? No. That, that, see, it, well, then that is a product that you've slowly created, right? Oh, oh, of art. Oh, my, my tweets are badass. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not, a, it's not a book of tweets about my lunch. <laughs> oh, but if it was a very amusing tweet about your lunch, it could be in there. No, I but it's ruthlessly a... <laughs> excised all tweets about food. <laughs> but I think what, part of my so you're mind. lying. It's a part of your life and a part of your... If there are no fucking taco tweets in your book, I'm not buying it. <laughs> The thing is, is that what what we what has created what has been created over the last ten years is a social milieu that has a different creative dynamic. It's not neither it's neither better nor worse than what came before, but it has certain advantages and, and disadvantages. Um, I came out uh, with my book in 2005, but I originally put it on the on the web in 2002. Uh, so I kind of kind of bridge the, those two dynamics. And the thing that I always tell people is the old way has its advantages. Uh, there For a certain type of author or a certain type of artist, it's going to be extraordinarily helpful. But th at the same time, um, you know, in science fiction, we have this guy named Hugh Howie who just put his up, stuff up on Amazon. It sold hundreds and thousands of copies. Then he got, became professionally published. There is, there is still a winnowing process. There's still respect for a uh, you know leveling up as it as it were. I do think you are absolutely correct, John Roderick, that there is a that there is a honey trap of the internet uh, that you can just always be like you know popular to fifteen hundred people. But it's the same honey trap that happened with a lots of bands and a lots of different scenes where they were locally famous and they just kind of like this is fun. Right, and, and I think I mean I I use bands as my as my matrix in thinking about this, there are a lot more bands now. Yeah. And there are a lot fewer great bands. Mm. Yeah. Um, Randall? I don't know, I mean I mean I feel like, you know, just as someone who reads comics, like uh, the comics I read that that are out there, I feel like there are comics that that have easily like as much, you know, craft put into them and like I mean, I'm just sort of picking at random. There, there was this comic Copper that ran for a little while that that was, you know, beautifully drafted in every panel, and it was like it was gorgeous, and it was like the kind of thing that you wouldn't have, uh, you know, for for quite a while in the newspapers, you wouldn't have seen. Um, I think that it's a lot easier to see the the unsuccessful stuff or the stuff that isn't really as carefully done, and 
And so that sort of counts into your mental average of what's out there. No. But, at, at, you know, the bottom line is that there, that there are, you know, 7 billion people in the world and each of them are awake for about 16 hours a day. And, like, there are a certain number of eyeballs out there. And, like, to get, you know, you can only get so many of them for so much time. And that's, it's about the same amount that it's always been. And you know maybe maybe it's getting divided up differently now, and maybe more people are looking at a few you know smaller things than everyone watching the same TV channel. But you've still got a you've still got the same struggle of there are more people making things than there are people looking at them, and you know, and that that sort of ruthlessly you know winnows it down in the same way it always has, just through different mechanisms. <laughs>